We bless your name, Lord. We praise and exalt you and thank you for another day. For this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God is our strength and power and he always makes our way perfect. Lord, we bless your name today. We thank you for another new week, God. We give you praise and we know, Father, that this week will be great. We decree and declare. We know you have a plan for our lives. And so we decree and declare this. We will all have a great week. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Therefore, we will go forth in the strength and under the power and the anointing of our God. Because God is with us. He has a plan for us and he has already empowered us. He's already given us his strength to accomplish his plan. So we thank you again, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We thank you for another new day. And today, Lord, we put this, we put this day into your hands. We say your perfect will be done. Whatever we say and do, we pray that, Lord, it would bring honor and glory to your name. And in the words of our mouths <coughs> and the meditation of our hearts, let it be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we thank you. We give you praise. And Lord, those of your children who may be going through a surgery today, who may have lost a loved one last night, who this morning couldn't get out of bed, had to be rushed to the emergency room. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that still heals. And I pray, God, that they would reach out to you knowing that you care. You care about every aspect of their lives. And so, Lord, I thank you, those who believe in you, for believing you for healing. I thank you, Father, that by the stripes of Jesus, they're healed. Those who are going into surgery today, I pray they not be fearful, but we pray, Lord, that you will guide the hands of the surgeons, guide the hands of the doctors, the anesthesiologists, everyone that's going to be a part of this surgery. I thank you, Lord, that it will be done well. And I thank you that your children would rest in you, Father. Those who may have a court hearing today, I pray they would step in that courtroom, even especially if they're a child of you, knowing that you are their righteous judge and you would work things out for their good. So we give you praise, we give you honor and glory. And we pray for those, God, who didn't have a good night's rest because they were being tormented by the enemy. They were being tormented by those voices, who uh, voices that telling them it's not worth the while living. And, and, and voices that kept them awake. We come against every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, we speak the word of God with boldness because it is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, God spoke, broke those cedars trees and every stronghold in the lives of God's children has to be broken. Every tormenting spirit, we speak to you again. You would lose the minds of God's children, lose the minds of all God's children. Every controlling spirit, every spirit of fear, you have to go. Every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of disobedience, every curse on the lives of God's children has to cease. Now, in the name of Jesus, we call for healing of the mind, healing of the mind. I thank you, Father, that, 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 that your children knows that they are loved by you they are faithfully and wonderfully made and regardless of what they may have done in the past you have not hold that against them as long as they come to you asking your forgiveness it's forgiven and it's forgotten so i thank you for the spirit of peace i thank you that our children men and women of god they walk out in your power under your authority they would use your word to fight against all the fiery darts of the enemy all the lies that the enemy be bringing their way they will use your word greater is god who is in me than he that is in the world god has not given me the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind lord i thank you that they would confess the word knowing they have a sound mind so we speak to every distracting spirit we speak to every tormenting confusing spirit you would lose the mind of god's children and we commend you in the name of jesus and we give you praise god we give you praise we give you honor and glory we say thank you in jesus name amen god is good thank you all for joining us miss marion and miss mimi thank you for joining us good morning good morning i hope you both had a great weekend and we believe in the Lord that this week would be even better than last week. 
because God is good and God wants the best for his children. So whatever, whatever may come your way today, it's the beginning of a work week. It's the beginning for many people. It's this first day back to work after the weekend. It's the first way back to school after the weekend. We are going forward in God's strength, power, and anointing. Let's decree and decree. Let's call it into being. We will have a great week. It will be a better week than last week. And I thank you, God, that our children go to school. They're of quick understanding. They understand everything that will be taught to them today. They would focus. They have good attention. Those who are fighting, uh, uh, learning disabilities we thank you lord for touching their mind in the name of jesus and we call forth clear thinking we call forth clear understanding we thank you father in the name of jesus because they can do all things through christ who strengthens them you are their healer you will touch that mind they'll be able to comprehend and understand and remember what they've been taught and what they studied in jesus name amen thank you all for joining us now today it's a new topic. We are coming down. We have like, what, two chapters left? We're coming down to the end of our book, The Purpose Driven Life. I've been enjoying this book. I've learned so much. This is my second time reading this book through. But you know, when God is in it, there is so much. God always has something to, to add to our lives. And so I'm hoping that you have all gained something from us going reading this book together. So again, we're reading The Purpose Driven Life from by Rick Warren. And our confession for today for the children is found in 2 Timothy verse, chapter 1, verse 17. And we probably all know this verse, but I love it. I'm going to say, it says, God has not given me. Well, the verse says us, but we're going to make it personal. And the Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But the confession is, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.17. So children, young people, as you go to them, even adults, we could also confess this word. Whatever is coming your way. Even before you step at your house, confess the word. That whatever may come your way to intimidate you, to bring fear, you may have a... Whatever you may have to do in school, and some people, they don't like math, and maybe you may, may be introduced into something new today, and you're sitting there, and you're hearing in your mind, oh, you know you won't do well at this. You know you don't like math, you know. And so you start to get nervous. You just confess that word, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. Therefore, I'm of quick understanding. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Interpret it in a way that I would understand when my teacher teach me. And you, you confess the word. God has not given me the spirit of fear. Whatever we have to face today, whatever report we may have heard from the doctor, we will hear, do not walk in fear. Call on God. Confess the word of God. And he's going to bring you through. Confession for adults is... Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. Mark 16, 15. And then the King James says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel uh, and tell the news to everyone, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here it says, Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. So as children of God, we remember last week we spoke about mission. What is our mission? tell those who don't know God about him. All right, so chapter 38 in the Purpose Driven Life, and the title of this chapter is Becoming a World Class Christian. Interesting, interesting topic, right? Okay, Becoming a World Class Christian. Send us around the world with the news of your saving power. And your eternal plan for all mankind. I'm going to read it again. Send us around the world with the news of your saving power. And your eternal plan for all mankind. Psalm 67 verse 2. And that's from the Living Bible. The Great Commission is your commission. And what's the Great Commission? We just said it. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. God commissioned us mission that's our mission so the Great Commission is your commission you have a choice to make you will be either a world-class Christian or a worldly Christian again you have a choice to make I would either I have a choice I would either be a world-class Christian or a worldly Christian 
worldly Christians look to God primarily for personal fulfillment. Again, worldly Christians look to God primarily for personal fulfillment. They are saved but self-centered. Worldly Christians are saved but self-centered. They love to attend concerts and enrichment seminars, but you would never find them at a missions conference because they aren't interested. Again, again, the worldly Christians look to God primarily for personal fulfillment. They are saved, but self-centered. They love to attend concerts and enrichment seminars, but you would not find them at a missions conference because they aren't interested. They aren't interested in souls. They aren't interested in telling other people about God. Their prayers focus on their own needs. Their prayers also focus on their blessings and happiness. So their prayers focus on their own needs, blessings, and happiness. It's a me first faith. That's the type of faith they have. Me first. It's all about me. How can God make my life more comfortable? That's what they always think about. They want to use God for their purpose, for their purposes, instead of being used for his purposes. Again, worldly Christians want to use God for their purposes, instead of saying, God, use me for your purposes. Use me for your glory. What do you want me to do for you, God? What do you want me to enrich the kingdom? That's not what they say, but they want to know. They want to use God for their purposes. In contrast, world-class Christians know they are saved to serve. World-class Christians know they are saved to serve and, and made for a mission. They know that they are saved to serve and they are made for a mission. They are eager to receive a personal assignment and excited about the privilege of being used by God. Isn't that awesome? Again. World-class world Christians know they were saved to serve and made for a mission. They are eager to receive a personal assignment and are excited about the privilege of being used by God. World-class Christians are the only fully, act, fully alive people on the planet. World-class Christians, he said, are the only fully alive people on the planet. Some people may not agree with that, but let's see what else he has to say. Their joy, confidence, and enthusiasm are contagious because they know they're making a difference. Again, their joy, confidence, enthusiasm, uh, and enthusiasm are contagious because they know they're making a difference. They wake up each morning expecting God to work through them in fresh ways. Mm. Isn't that amazing? Because we know who we serve. We know the God who's our source. We know our purpose. So we wake up saying, God, I know you got something great for me today. Exciting. So they wake up every morning expecting God to work through them in fresh ways. Which type of Christian do you think you are? Or which type of Christian do you want to be? Which type of Christian do you want to be a worldly Christian or a world-class Christian? Am I a worldly Christian or am I a world-class Christian? God invites you to participate in the greatest, largest, most diverse, and most significant cause in history. Again, God invites you to participate in the greatest, largest, most diverse, and most significant cause in history, his kingdom. Nothing, history is his story. His story is his God's story. He's building his family for eternity. Nothing matters more and nothing will last as long. Again, history is his story, which is God's story. He's building his family for eternity. Nothing matters more and nothing will last as long. 
From the book of Revelation, we know that God's global mission will be accomplished. Someday, the Great Commission will be the Great Completion. Again, someday. The Great Commission, which is to go into the world, teach the gospel, tell those who meet, who meet about God. One day, this Great Commission will be the Great Completion. In heaven, an enormous crowd of people from every race, tribe, nation, and language will one day stand before Jesus Christ to worship him. Again, in heaven, an enormous crowd of people from every race, tribe, nation, and language will one day stand before Jesus Christ to worship him. Wouldn't that be awesome? I always wonder, you know, sometimes I listen to, to music and I hear people sing. And, and their voices are so melodious. And, and especially when you hear some choirs sing. I love Brooklyn Tabernacle. When they come together, my gosh, it's so heavenly. And I say to myself many times, can you imagine what it's going to be like in heaven? When, when, when we come together, people of all races, all, from all backgrounds, and we there worshiping God and the angels are there singing. My goodness, it's going to be awesome. We can begin to imagine what heaven is going to be like. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Gets me so excited when I think about it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, in heaven, an enormous crowd of people from every race, tribe, nation, and language will one day stand before Jesus Christ to worship him. Getting involved in a world-class Getting involved as a world-class Christian will allow you to experience a little of what heaven will be like in advance getting again involved as a world-class christian will allow you to experience a little of what heaven will be like in advance when jesus told his followers to go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone that small band of poor middle east disciples were overwhelmed were they supposed to walk or ride slow animals that's all they had for transportation. And there were no ocean crossing ships, so there were real physical barriers to going to the old world, to going to the old world. Today, we have airplanes, ships, trains, buses, and automobiles. It's a small world after all, and it's shrinking daily. You can fly across the ocean in a matter of hours. And be home the next day if you need to be. The opportunities for normal, everyday Christians to become involved in a short-term international missions are now literally limitless. Every corner of the world is available to you. Just ask the travel industry. That's true. We have no excuses not to spread the good news. And those of us who may not like to travel, but all of us are not called to go out to the mission field or go to another parts of the world. But there are ways in which we tell, we start where we are in our offices, in our neighborhood, on our streets, in our blocks, our corners, wherever we go, we start there. And then some of you, um, you know, everybody around you, you know, you've spoken to about the Lord and, and, and you don't know what else to do. Then you could start sending others, you know, ask the Lord to direct you. There are people that goes every day to different countries telling other people they call missionaries or they go on mission trips and so even if you think you have done all that you could in your area you could send others by sewing and sending some money to them so that they could sew even last week the author spoke about people investing in giving money to to get the bible written in different languages that's another way in which we could be um, telling others or investing in in sewing thank you jesus Today we have airplanes, ships, trains, buses, and automobiles, in, and it's a small world after all. The opportunity for normal, everyday Christians to become involved in short-term international missions are now literally limitless. Every corner of the world is available to you. Now, with the internet, the world has gotten even smaller. In addition to phones and faxes, we deliver with internet we de we deliver with internet access sorry in addition 
to phones and faxes, any believer with internet access can personally communicate with people in virtually every country on earth. The old world is at your fingertips. We have Facebook. And many of us use it to share a verse. Many of us use it like the Lord told me to come on. And this is a way, a means in which we could share the gospel. So there's so many things, as he says, at our fingertips that we can use. He said, the world is at your fingertips. Every, even every remote village get, even remote, even many remote villages, sorry, get email. So you can now carry on e evangelistic conversation with people on the other side of the world without even leaving your home. It has never been easier in history to fulfill your commission to go to the world, to go to the whole world. The great barriers are no longer distance, coast, or transportation. The only barrier is the way we think. Let's say that the only barrier in me Giving the news to someone, the good news is the way I think. To be a world-class Christian, you must make some mental shifts. Your perspective and attitude must change. Let's say that. To be a world-class Christian, I must make some mental shifts. My perspective and attitudes must change. And you know, I'm reading this as you think about it. When Jesus told his disciples to go into the world and told the people that God saved to preach the gospel, think about it. They really didn't have it easy. So those days, if you had money, you had a little camel or you had a horse that you could ride, you know, most of you use camels or the donkeys or whatever, you know. But most of them did it by walking. And there's no way in the Bible you heard them complaining or they say, man, we can't do that. It's impossible. They were eager. They, they, they wanted to obey God. They wanted to do. They wanted to share the good news. And so we told them to. And, it, and they did. And so much more us as the author is saying, we have things to our fingertips. We could pick up a phone. You don't even have to use your, your, your minutes on the phone or, you know, even on Facebook. You have ways we could talk to others, encourage someone, see what they're doing, message them. There is no excuse excuses he said it's all in our minds now a question how to think like a world-class christian shift from self-centered thinking to other centered thinking again how should we how could we think like a world-class christian one of the ways is to shift from self-centered thinking to other centered thinking the Bible says, my friends, stop thinking like children. Think like mature people. That's found in 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Again, my friends, stop thinking like children. Think like mature people. This is the first step to becoming a world-class Christian. Children only think of themselves. Growing grown-ups think of others. So check ourselves. Let's check ourselves. Do I always think about myself? Is it everything about me? Somebody says something and we easily get offended. They're getting at me. Is it all about me? Whatever is done, people shouldn't all the attention should be on me. Then if that's the way, then we need to stop and take, take you know, take a note. How, how old am I? 47, 35, 17. Do I still think everything should be about me? That's a childlike mentality, it's in childlike thinking. So again, children only think of themselves. Grown-ups think of others. God commands, don't think only about your own affairs, but be interested in others too. Philippians 2, 4. Of course, this is a difficult mental shift because we're naturally self-observed. And almost all advertising encourages us to think of ourselves. Mm -hmm. The only way we can make this shift is by movement by, sorry, is by a moment by moment dependence on God. The only way we could shift from that type of thinking is by going to God and said, God, help me. Help me to focus on what what, what, what you want me to focus on. Help me to focus on what is important to you. What's, your, what's important to you? Let it be important to me. That's the only way we can do it by asking God. Fortunately, he doesn't leave us to struggle, meaning God does not leave us to struggle on our own. 
God has given us his spirit. That's why we don't think the same way that the people of this world think. You know, sometimes you, you're with people, whether it's in the classroom or whether it's, 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 it's at work or wherever you are, and somebody may say something, you would say like, what? where did he get that from? Or where did she get that from? How did that come to his or her mind? And you, you start wondering, you always got to check yourself. Mm-hmm. Because Christ is not in their hearts. It's open and the enemy brings all kinds of stuff and dumps into people's minds and they just speak what they feel or what they hear. But when you are, when you become to know Christ, when you get to know God, it's a renewal of the mind. It's a renewal of the mind. So it's, he says here, God has given his spirit so that we don't think the same way that the people of the world think. Begin asking the Holy Spirit to help you to think of the spiritual need of unbelievers wherever, whenever you talk to them. Again, let's all begin to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to think of the spiritual need of unbelievers whenever we talk to them. With, with practice, you can develop the habit of praying silent breath prayers for those you encounter so habitual as you practice doing it you could you could you could make it a habit of praying silent breath prayers for those you encounter say this he's given us an example father help me to understand what is keeping this person from knowing you that's a good prayer quietly to yourself lord help me to understand what is keeping this person from knowing you your goal or our goal is to Figure out where others are in their spiritual journey and then do whatever will bring them a step closer to knowing Christ. Our goal, he says, should be to figure out what others, where others are in their spiritual journey and then do whatever will bring them to a closer step to knowing Christ. You can learn how to do this by adopting the mindset of Paul who said, I don't think about what would be good for me, but almost what would be good for many people so that they might be saved. Mm, what a selfless prayer. Paul said again, I don't think about what would be good for me, but, what, but about what would be good for many people so that they might be saved. One time my pastor said that sometimes we're working at a place and we're going through stuff and people and some of you just will go to God and cry, God, deliver me from this place. I'm the only Christian here. And, da, 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 da. and they're crying out to God. And he said, did you ever stop to think, well, there is a reason why you're there. If you're the only Christian there, then maybe then that God wants to use you as that light. Don't go crying to God. Take me out. Remove me from these, from these heathens. Remove me from these unsafe people, these ungodly people. No, stop and think, God, yes, I'm the only Christian here. And yes, it may seem a bit hard or impossible, but your word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you said in your word that we should tell others. So, Father, you show me how I can and what I should say. And, and you know, and it, 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 now it doesn't mean you taking the boss's time to, you, you know, to preach to people. But by your words, simple day-to-day -day things that you do. You know, someone may say something um, that you think may upset you. Give them a smile because they don't know better. You have the Christ. You have the Holy Spirit in you. So say, Lord, whatever I do, somebody's in need of something, you try to help them. Let them see the fruit in you. And as they seek the fruit in you, many times they will come and ask you, why are you so happy? Or why are you doing this? That is the way for you to. But whatever you do, even let's say maybe you leave in work after you clock up and you're walking down the hall and somebody said, man, I'm in such pain. Or man, this day was so ridiculous. I had a terrible day. That is the, that is the opening for you to say something about the Lord. But where we are, wherever we are, you look for, see it as a place where God can use you. You look around, you see people don't know the Lord and don't get mad at the way they behave because they don't know God. Let's ask God for a heart of compassion, as he says, as he said it before, our goal is to figure out where others are in their spiritual lives. Ask the Lord, Father, help me to understand what is keeping this person from knowing you. And simply by helping them out in a simple situation, whether they may say, oh my goodness, I forgot my lunch home today. 
And that's your cue. You know what? I could take you for lunch. And you take them to lunch. And while you're sitting down there, you bring it up. You talk about, um, God, as you know, man, how's your weekend? And if they start saying something, you could say, my dear, my weekend was good. God is good. I went to church. And, and then and it's just a little look for ways. Let's say, God, show me ways in which I could minister to this young lady, this young man, my friend, whatever. So let's remember, he says, he is with us. We are not alone. So again, I'm going to read this. Paul, you can learn how to do this, meaning how to minister to others, how to, 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 to meet them at their need by adopting the mindset of Paul who said, I don't think about what would be good for me, but about what would be good for many people so they might be saved. And some people may say, well, that's crazy. Who's going to take care of me? i got to take care of me. What it means in that sense, yes, you look about the phase of your life, whatever, but your main goal should not be all about you. You're thinking souls, souls, souls. What if this person dies tomorrow? What, I do, what if I don't see them another day? Let me try to tell them about Jesus so that they will not miss it, so they will have an eternity of joy and peace and happiness. So that should be our goal. Show me God. How can I reach this this my coworker? How can I meet my, my classmate? How can I meet my, my professor? Whatever. Let's ask God. And He's not gonna leave us. He said He's with us all the way, even to the end of the world. And so many times we just have to have that shift in our minds. Lord, I come to you. I'm nervous about this, this person I know, but you give me the wisdom. You you let there be you you provide that opening so that I could minister, I could witness to this individual. And we will stop here for today. It's 702. I don't want to go over time. But let's remember again, as I said, God is with you. Our commission is his commission, his mission. That's our commission. He commissioned us to go and tell others and we can do it. And so let's look at ourselves. Are we, the question today, how to think like a world-class Christian? Am I a world-class Christian or I, or am I a worldly Christian only there? Going to church, looking to God to see what I could get to enhance my life, what, what, what I want from God. Mind you, when we, the thing about it, when you put yourself out there to God and said, God, use me. When you begin to do what the Lord asks you to do, he takes care of you, believe you, me, he opened doors that, I mean, as I share with you, there are things that may be in your mind. You don't even have to pray for it. And he provides because you are his child. It's like you being a mother or a father and you see the need of your child. Before they ask you many times, you go get it because you know there's a need. That's who God is. So when we take care of, our, of God's business, Many times we don't even have to worry about ourselves. He already has it there for us. So, and many times, you know, we step out there in fear. And so I know it's it, a lot of us, our faith are not at that level. But the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. I mean, there's so many testimonies I can share with you, but God is good. Let's remember, as I take care of God's business, he will take care of mine. We don't need to, have to, you know, many times we push ourselves and we do things. We go the extra mile, do things that we don't even need to do. And God is saying, if she would just take the time to listen to me or he would, I've already made that thing possible for her or him. But they're so focused on getting it. They're so focused on whatever they need. They go there. Sometimes they waste time and money. And if they would just come to me, I, it's, I already had it there for them. I would just show them how to get it. It's so easy. So let's, let's take that time and think, what am I doing? my life what does it show is it all about what god has done for me and what i could do for god to, to, to bring souls to him or is it all about me 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 some of us have our plans and it's good to have goals i'm gonna to go to church or i'm gonna get involved and help in the church when i finish getting my doctorate when i finish getting my house when i and we're in two jobs and we're going and our lives are a mess we can so many times husband spouses coming and going wife cannot see the husband husband cannot see the wife we're all so busy, so busy going after things. And mind you, it's not bad to have a, a, a purpose and, and, and to have a goal, goal, but we should not let it overtake us to the point we can't serve God. We can't see our family members. If we're in that situation today, when fathers, when the wife is coming in, the father, husband is going out, and, and, and we're going this way, that way, and everybody's so busy, involved in two jobs and in school, let's, let's take a time and say, Lord, show me. You schedule my life. Show me what I need to do. We don't want to be burnt out. We don't want to be burnt out. We don't want to be all self-centered on ourselves. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us of 
who, who whose we are when we bring our lives to you lord we belong to you and, and you would not force us to do anything that we don't want to do god you are not that you're not a controller you give us a free will. It's out there for us. You show us your word. You tell us what you want us to do. And it's up to us if we want to obey. But Lord, there is their benefits. When we obey you, Father, you said if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So help us, God. Those of us who think that we have to take care of ourselves and, and we are in control of everything, help us to remember that you are in control. And whatever we need to do, God, we would bring it to you today. We will spend that time listening to you. And most of all, we would make ourselves available to tell someone about you help us father just draw in your strength and to remember life is not all about us but it's being the person you want us to do be and as we help others you will open the doors for us and you will take care of all of our needs so we give you praise honor and glory as we go today lord help us to remember who we are in you help us to move in your faith move out there in confidence knowing you are with us you will provide and take care of every need. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today. Miss Gomez, long time no see, girl. Thank you for joining us. I hope you all have a great day. And um, remember, give someone a compliment. Whether it's a child or an adult, give them a compliment. You don't know what an encouragement that may be to this individual today. Be blessed. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow talking more about a world-class Christian. Take care. Bye. Have a great day.